Welcome again, everybody. I'm Pastor Deborah, and once again, we are in the Garden of Eden, spiritually, that wonderful place here on earth that was created just for you to live in, spiritually, for your forever person to come to. Yeah, so welcome. I see all of you. I see there's more coming in. Yeah, welcome. Yes, this is Pastor Deborah. We're going to have a teaching today. We're working in a wonderful, wonderful letter that was written to you, given to me by a wonderful, loving Heavenly Father years and years ago. I wrote it out, sent it out. It's on the website, but God be love, love is here. Org. It's on the YouTube channel, The Hidden Kingdoms, and the Children's Channel for children of all ages, just for you, little one. It's entitled, My Dear Spiritual Child Letter, from me, Agape Love Himself. So I want to pick up in the next part of this letter. It's number 44. We had just started a new part of the letter called the glory blanket. It was the experiences of being touched by this glory, this love, as a soft, sweet, and gentle blanket for your spirit. This motion video is by Pixabay, and I'm recording in Zoom Pro. I'm sitting in my living room, naturally, with no green screen. As you know, I don't use them. So weird things will happen. My hand will disappear. My background may come through around my hair, and I may not be as clear as I could be. But it's so easy just to sit down, set up my cameras, get my organization notes together, and record. Yeah, I have difficulty some days. It's very noisy in the neighborhood. Sometimes husband is downstairs making noise. The dog is barking. Trucks are going by. Airplanes, we seem to be in a flight zone for airplanes. Yeah, so it gets noisy some days. This morning, it's very quiet for a while. Trying to do this before lunch. But right now, we're in the realm of the spirit with the glory blanket. Number two, and I want to start off first with a scripture and then prayer. The glory blanket's a wonderful, wonderful story of Pastor Deborah's experience, being touched, revived, cleansed, delivered by a presence that was unknown to me as these waves of golden light just keep coming and coming. That's what washed over my spirit, came into my spirit, out from the Holy Spirit to my spirit, which was already in me. But I was now ready to begin to experience the powerful presence of agape love. Mm -hmm. I had to be a seeking spiritual heart. I had to want to know this God, and I had to want to have more of something I knew nothing about, but I wouldn't be satisfied till I found it. Did I know what I was searching for? No. Did I know what the glory of the Lord was? Did I know what the presence of the Lord was? Did I know what a glory blanket was? But I knew there was more than what I had been receiving in religion, from teachers and preachers, more than just the songs for my soul. So I went seeking, found it in the Brownsville Revival between 1995 and 2000, touched in prayer by the glory blanket. Now, that revival ended. It was something that maybe a few million people attended. 
most believers, maybe 99.999%, never heard of it, never attended it, laughed it off, wasn't real. But it changed Pastor Deborah's life. Because I was seeking to help you, people, from the way of mental health counseling. And that all had to be taken away from me. I had to be willingly put it down to learn how to help people the Lord's way, the glory blanket, the presence of God was the beginning. But before I could even be touched, I had to be seeking, searching, looking for, dissatisfied with everything in life. I knew there was more of something. I'd read it in the Bible. I'd see the power and the majesty of this God that I didn't see today. I watched movies about him. I couldn't see him today. So I went searching in religion and churches, denominations, in world things to find it. And it took a young man, Steve Hill, to bring it to Pensacola, Florida. It's on the website. It's also on YouTube if you type in the Brownsville Revival. Music was there. A church who had been prepared by its pastor for two years. He taught on revival. He taught on the presence of God. He, he spoke and led weekly prayer meetings with banners of beautiful, that you could focus your prayers. He lost members because all he preached on was revival. He was unsatisfied also. He had a big church, maybe a thousand members on television, and lovely wife and family. And he heard from this Steve Hill down in Argentina. There was more. Oh, there was so much more to this God than they had ever seen or heard. And this young Steve Hill, who's now in heaven, was so infectious in his talking about the power and the presence of the glory of God. This young pastor up in Pensacola, Florida, at the Brownsville Assembly of God Church, not the one that's there now, but another one. He wanted more of this God. He didn't know what it was, but he was dissatisfied. He threw his keys down in his church and said, if this is all there is, I quit. There has to be more. When you get like that, like Pastor Deborah was, not knowing what more was, but seeking and searching, looking. Oh, I was like you, looking in all the wrong places, doing all the wrong things to find it. The peace of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the touch, and I found it. And you can find it also through these videos. The revival's over with turned evil and wicked, Satan's presence and his witches showed up. God through, came through people, and God's presence lifted off of the young evangelist and left the building, so to speak. But he's in Pastor Deborah now. I'm a carrier of it. And so he gave me this poem, this letter, this glory blanket to tell you about him. Right here over this video, here in the garden, you can receive what I got. A touch from the Lord. More of the Lord. Uh -huh. It is possible. Because I learned there's no place he can't go. There's nobody he cannot reach with his love. So I want to begin first with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for never leaving us alone. Thank you for showing us that you were reaching out to us even through ancient days of the Egyptians and the Greeks. You were speaking to us in riddles and songs and poems. You were reaching to help us remember your name. Instead of poly gods, you wanted only one God, the great I am the giver of all life that was seen reflected in the sun. Father, thank you for never leaving humanity alone, always reaching and speaking out to us, 
to help us so we would remember your name. And we would remember through the years of mist and shadows and darkness and ignorance and the dust of time that we would come somehow and remember you, our creator, and the garden where we got started. Thank you, Father, for never leaving us alone, that through your Holy Spirit and your spoken word that became flesh, Christ Jesus, you came to us to show us yourself, to speak to us, to walk among us, and to show us who we really are to pay our penalty that we owed the kingdom of heaven and to show us that out of death would come new life, resurrection for all eternity. Thank you for coming. And now thank you for this letter, my dear spiritual child letter from me, Agape Love himself. And thank you for this personal story of the glory blanket. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, that was a good one. I want to begin with a scripture that God gave me so long ago when he was developing his ministry, Agape Love. Mm -hmm. It's Matthew 18, 14, out of the authorized King James version of the Bible, I had to have some foundational scriptures that would speak to me of the Father's love for you and why all that he does, the purposes that was behind his actions, his desires of his heart for us, and his everlasting covenant that he has made with us. Matthew 18, 14. For so it is not the spiritual will, the desire, the purposes of this, your heavenly father, agape love, who is in heaven, that even one of you, one of these spiritual little ones, that you should speak spiritually perish not from him, be eternally spiritually separated from him and his agape love. His heart's desire was that you would never, ever eternally and without any hope be eternally separated spiritually from him. So he set about to reach you. And this letter is just one way. So let's begin the glory blanket, part two. You little one, you've been searching and searching for this, this power, this mercy, this glory. You've been searching in rituals of religion bowing at walls, bowing six times a day, going on pilgrimages, fasting and prayer. You're searching for what you don't know what, but you're looking. You go to the, a movie. Maybe it's in there. The next game or sports event. You want to be on the winning side and feel the glorious accolades of being a winner. Maybe it's the next song that you will hear or sing and feel joy and pleasure and can dance to or just have some peace. Maybe it's your next performance that you do on social media. Maybe it's all the likes you get, all the people that comment on what you put out. You're looking, you're searching, trying to find something Maybe you're searching by getting a new hair color. Maybe through your clothes or jewelry. You're looking, you're searching, trying to be attractive. 
-hmm. Maybe you're trying to get a new physical body. Maybe the one you have is not who you think you are. Doesn't match up with your feelings. Maybe it needs a lot of help. Maybe it needs reworking. You're looking for a new sexual identity. Maybe a new lover. A new friend. A new partner. A new relationship. You're searching, looking, trying to find happiness. But you don't know what it is. You could be a multimillionaire, own yachts, have everything, and then be afraid to lose it. Haven't found it yet. Maybe you go for a new job. You don't know that you're looking. Maybe you just think you deserve more money, better, better supervisors. You're trying so hard to find something. You don't know anything about, but you sense it. Sometimes you can feel it. Sometimes it's just beyond your reach. Maybe you try to find it in drugs, alcohol, sex. What is it? Happiness, peace, joy, love. Maybe it's just healing. From what? Yet everything seems fleeting, not really fulfilling, not lasting. But this God of agape love, he knew what Pastor Deborah was seeking. It's something you can't even talk about because you don't have a name for it. You, you, you don't know if you've been lied to. You don't know what it is. You tried. But this father knows what you are seeking. He knows what's missing in your spirit. He knows you've been in ignorance and darkness, forgotten his name. He knows if you even knew his name, you were backslidden away from him, gone off the path into sin in the world, Pastor Deborah had. Even if you were born again and a believer, I believed in this God when I was three or four, praying to him, to Jesus, for the whole world. But time and family and life, I went down a different path. I was a baby Christian, probably an infant. The church wasn't teaching me. There wasn't Bible studies in the home. I saw no evidence of what I heard or read about in the Bible. This God didn't seem to be real. I never felt this kind of touch from a glory blanket. I wasn't growing. I was a starving baby infant, spiritually. My parents, they did introduce me to him, but they didn't know how to feed me spiritual food. They had their own issues. The churches we went to, religion. Their, their words were not anointed. Nothing reached me. The veil of flesh was powerful. I hadn't had a Hebrews 4.12 spiritual circumcision yet. I hadn't become a seeker, a looker, wanting more of the Lord, whatever that meant. But I would. And I would be fulfilled. But I was needing and seeking, just like you are. The glory blanket's always here on earth, but it needs you to need it. And you do, but you don't know that. You need to be a seeker of it. And you are, but you don't know what you're seeking. But you're being drawn. Pastor Deborah was drawn, but not to it, to other things, replacements, figments of my imagination, things that could not last. That were not, that were not this glory blanket. This spiritual presence, this spiritual glory blanket needs to become your spiritual foundation of you, the forever person. This presence of a copy love is a powerful drug. 
And that is what the spirit man, the forever person, every one of us on planet Earth is searching for, in need of, seeking, but not finding, seeking, but not knowing what. Always walking into mist and darkness, looking for something that we have no name for, can't find. So I became a spiritual bearer of the Most High God's glory blanket. Once I got it myself in the Brownsville Revival, which you can get right now, right here. Touch them, Lord, with your presence. Give them more of you as you gave me. The glory blanket. It is agape love. The father and mother of combined. It is their spiritual presence. Himself. For he is love. He is agape, love. It never spiritually matters where you are, how deep in a hole or dungeon or ignorance you are. Even if you're in physical prisons, trapped by trafficking, trapped by starvation and war and poverty, doesn't matter what culture you're in, what religion you are believing in. He knows where you are. Even if you're in spiritual trances, deep sleeps, fractured into many personalities, living in the past of trauma and abuse, being abused by war and trauma. In the spiritual presence of your spirit. The most high God's presence. His agape love. His glory blanket. Is coming to you right now. It could and it would go. Wherever you are. It's seeking you. It's looking for you. It knows where you're at. How can it come to you here on earth? Because there's no spiritual distance or time in the spirit realm. He can reach you in your dreams. Mm -hmm. The most high God speaks to us about this. And he did through his own son himself, Christ Jesus. And he speaks through Pastor Deborah now as I speak his words of love to you. Or he'll speak through songs that people have written. Music. He speaks about life himself. Every time a child is born or an animal is born or a seed grows into a mighty tree. Or you see the sun always there. He's speaking. I had to learn how to be a speaker and to bring the glory blanket to others, even on the phone, talking to many who were coming through one person. I had to learn to have the words that I wrote be anointed with it or in the prayers that I pray. I had to learn it was possible to pray with you right here on this video. Because this is a spiritual work. I had to get beyond the flesh. Going to a church meeting. Waiting till 1030 at night. When the music started. And the prayer teams came out. God had to deliver me. From the dependency. On other humans. On church building services. Music. So I knew. He would be able to touch me anytime, anywhere, and I wasn't dependent 
on anything, to have a touch of his glory, his presence in my life. There's many songs that you can hear and listen to, sometimes just looking at life itself, beautiful flowers, the sunshine, rainbows, the glory blankets there talking. And he gave me a couple of songs that I used to listen to and still do during those days of the Brownsville Revival that I discovered. They're on YouTube. And it would help bring down the glory blanket, whoever I was talking to. I didn't sing the songs. I don't have a, a voice that sings. Don't play a musical instrument. It's the words that are anointed that would touch people. I had to understand the songs so I could understand him and his deep desire to touch you. And one of the songs I wrote down that I would send out with this letter was called Oh Holy Night. Now, I, it was adapted for Agape Love. Now, this was written by a dolphin Adam, I'm probably not saying it right, in 1847. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of a dear, precious child's birth, you. Now, this was about the birth of the Savior, Jesus the Christ. But God turned it around in my heart and spirit, so it would reflect your birth as a new child of God. A night when the heavenly Father's agape love came down and touched a broken heart, a broken world. Long lay the heart of humanity in sin and mourning until a gappy love came down and appeared when Pastor Deborah got touched by the glory blanket of a gappy love. My mourning was over. I came out of sin. My broken heart and was healed. And the soul, yeah, my soul, along with my spirit and physical body, felt a copy love's touch. This is sort of, as I said, an adaptation of the song. The thrill of hope. The weary heart rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morning. Fall on your knees, I did, many times. Oh, hear the angels' voices singing. Oh, spiritual child of agape love. I love you. Oh, precious one, divine. Yes, you're divine. And this is agape love speaking to you. The night. When my agape love filled the emptiness and the hollowness of a wounded, broken, and lonely spirit. Oh, love divine. Oh, the night agape love came down. Pastor Deborah experienced this for years, night after night. I was so empty. I loved it. I was an addict of it. I couldn't wait to have it touch me. It was peaceful. He would talk to me. I could see in the spirit. My spirit was being infused with a copy love, glory, majesty. I couldn't explain it, but it changed my life. And it still touches me today, right now. There'll be times when it's, I can't even speak some days. 
It's just so beautiful. The second song that went with this letter, this story called The Glory Blanket, was called In the Presence of Jehovah. And that was written by Damarius Carbonell. I'm probably not saying it right. Many people have sung it, but I'm just reading the words that have been adapted by God for his agape love, his glory blanket. In and out of situations that tug at war at me, all day long I struggle for the answers that I need. But when I come into his presence, all my questions become clear. And for that sacred moment, no doubt can interfere. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace. Can you say that about your God? that you are worshiping, serving, praying to right now. Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended in the presence of the king. Through his love, I'm back. (laughs) Husband came up here, wanted to talk to me about something in the neighborhood, so please forgive me. I'll try to pick up where I left off. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish. What kind? Your soul's troubles. Death is coming. You're not afraid. Death will come through many ways. It'll come quick, slow, but you will not be afraid of it now. You won't feel hopeless when death is near or loneliness, or abuse is happening, and your spiritual heart will be mended in the presence of the king. Through his love, the Lord has provided a place for you, little one, to rest, a place to find the answers in the hour of distress. Now, there is never any reason For one to give up in despair. Just slip away and breathe his name. For he will surely meet you there in the presence of Jehovah. God Almighty, Prince of Peace. Troubles vanish, hearts are mended. In the presence of of the king, in the presence of the king, in the glory blanket, you're in the presence of the king. When he touches your spirit, your spirit's heart is found, it's mended. Troubles vanish during these days. Eventually, you will come strong. But right now, come into the presence of Jehovah. My prayers were always something like this for you. Holy Father, let your agape love come down upon these precious spiritual child's heart and mind as a warm, sweet, soft blanket of your glory and presence. I would pray that on the telephone when they would in person. Father, touch them. Come down as a soft, sweet, warm blanket of your glory and agape love. Ways and ways of his glory would come. Feel the spiritual emptiness, Father, of their hearts and minds and souls. And take away their pains and loneliness. Feel the hollowness, the hollowness of their hearts, their emptiness. 
take away their spiritual heartaches. Touch them with your precious agape love. Pour out your sweet, soft, and warm spiritual presence in your glory blanket. Touch them with your gentle touch of agape love. Most pastors can't talk like this. They don't talk like this in prayer. When they pray for people, they're loud and rough. They don't realize most people have been abused and are fearful of loud noises, rough hands. Their spirits retreat because they are not hearing the gentle, loving voice of a father. All they're getting is the soulish power of the flesh. Fill their spiritual heart with your agape love that comes from your river of peace. Touch them with your prince of peace that flows from your own heart. Fill their spiritual heart with agape love that heals them and never hurts them. Thank you, Father, in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. Every time the Most High God would answer this prayer, for it is his own desires and heart's purposes for you. He desires to touch wounded and broken hearts of spiritual men with his glory blanket of agape love. His love is here for you now, today. What is it? It's something like rays of sunlight when you're in his presence. That's why most people love to just stand out in the sun, close their eyes, feel the warmth of the rays. They don't know why. They love it. Or when they look at a beautiful rainbow, they have hope. You're in his spiritual presence now of himself, his glorious, sparkling rays a peace and joy, forgiveness, agape love and mercy, wholeness and healing, deliverance, freedom, and strength. All a little one like you will ever need. So I would pray this, and he always answered. All are invited to come, see and taste of his Agape love in his presence. There's nowhere you can be in a coma, dying, in dreams, in the womb, out of the womb, no matter what culture, religion, or nation. He speaks your language, which is love. All are spiritually brought to his spiritual sanctuary where he has put his name and his presence abides. Here on earth, it's the Garden of Eden. Inside your spirit, he is there. All are welcomed, no matter how evil and wicked, for he knows even an evil, wicked spirit is in darkness and does not know his name or him. You're welcomed into his presence. Yes, the, even the most evil, wicked people, for that's the soul and the flesh. Those that are in the spirit that serve another, they don't know him yet. All are spiritually touched by a father's loving presence of glory. In the glory blanket. He gave me a little poem to close this out. It's called Come and See. Dear precious spiritual child, 
the heavenly father and i want to spiritually tell you how much you are loved with a love that's unknown to you agape you are so spiritually precious to the both of us there's no spiritual distance too great for the two of us to spiritually travel to spiritually reach you in the spiritual darkness the heavenly father wants to spiritually invite you to come and see a great wonder you have never seen or experienced before that's how pastor deborah was i was invited through the newspaper to come to this church service this revival called brownsville i accepted the invitation sometimes you'll be invited through songs poems artwork movies by a friend you'll be drawn into it by an animal by love mm -hmm. by what's happening in the world you'll be drawn in he invites you to come and bring others with you don't come alone this glory blankets for all humanity. The Garden of Eden awaits you. And if you're in the death throes of your physical body dying, the kingdom of heaven in heaven is waiting for you to receive you. Where the heavenly father is spiritually pouring out of his great powerful and majestic agape love into billions and billions and billions of precious ones such as you so sweetie come and see there's no physical travel required anymore and you don't have to know the way the holy spirit does so honey sweetie little one Come and see a copy love and let the glory blanket touch your life spiritually. I want to end this glory blanket part of this letter with a scripture, Psalms 100. It was a psalm, a song of praise written by King David, the second king of ancient Israel. Make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, all you lands, means all you people. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Be happy. He wants you to come into his glory blanket, into his garden. Know you that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations and now that ends this part of the letter of the glory blanket and we'll pick up next with a royal invitation to you and all of humanity so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these precious ones that you have drawn here today and that you will draw in years and years to come. Touch them, Father, with your agape love. Pour out your glory blanket. Help them to be touched and received. Your presence spiritually. Father, be about your work. This is your work. You went to the cross for this. 
He spoke to us in Isaiah 61 and 62 about this. Father, be about your work only that you can do. And Father, do it in gentleness and love and touch their precious, precious spirits with mercy and love and hope and joy and peace. Let them see you, come to know you, be touched by you so they will want to be your child. And if they want to be your child right now, Father, let it happen so that your victory of the cross, your purposes are fulfilled and more children are born into the family of God, the kingdom of heaven, because of your great love, through your glory blanket, through your presence of agape love. Be about your work, Father, right now through this video. In the name of Christ Jesus. Okay, I'll see you next time. We'll start the royal invitation to you. Bye.